I am going to show you how to make the big and thick dish scrubby. The materials you need for this project include cotton yarn that's used for making dishcloths. I prefer the Scrubby Cotton by Red Heart. You will also need a 5.5 millimeter hook, a pair of embroidery scissors, and a tapestry needle. The skills you'll need to do this project include the chain stitch and the single crochet. Let's get started. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is make a slip knot, and you're going to want to leave a very long tail for weaving in ends. I would suggest leaving about 12 inches. You can sort of eyeball this, just make sure that it, it's pretty long. So I'm going to start right about here. And once you have your slip knot done, what you want to do is you want to ex very, very loosely chain 16, okay? And what I mean by loosely, very loosely, is that would be one, two, three, four, and I hope you can tell how loose this is. There's a lot of space. It's kind of hard to tell because this scrubby yarn has all these little tags coming off of it that kind of grab the dirt and the grime when you're doing dishes, but you want it to be very, very loose. Otherwise, you might have a hard time going back into your chain. So this is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. Okay, and then what you want to do is you want to single crochet in the second chain from the hook. I like to turn mine over and go into the back post only. So this can be a little difficult to see with this type of yarn, but there should be stitch number one here. And this should be my second one from the chain. So I'm gonna go into there. And I'm going to single crochet. That's one. Now, this yarn can be a little hard to see in the beginning. So that's why I wanted the chain to be very, very loose. As you crochet, it will get easier. You will be able to see the holes better. But in the beginning, it can be a little bit difficult. So let's see, this should be two. And this should be three. Okay, so that's starting row one. And what I want you to do is go ahead and go all the way down to the end of your chain and I'll come back and meet you there after row one is complete, and I'll show you what to do next. So here we are at the end of round one. I have made 15 single crochets all, all the way across. Now remember, with our foundation chain, we started with 16 chain stitches, but then we skipped one by going into the second chain from the hook, and that would ultimately give us a final stitch count of 15. So what we're going to do next is single crochet to make one chain. We are gonna turn our work and we are gonna single crochet in each stitch across. Now it can be a little difficult here at the beginning to see where your stitches are, so it helps if you do it by feel. You can feel where the holes are. As your project gets larger, these holes will become much more apparent so they'll be easier to see and you'll get used to it so um, it won't be it won't seem as difficult as it does right now, but you are gonna go ahead and single crochet all the way across. Remember, there should be 15 of them. Chain one, single crochet all the way across. Keep doing that until you have reached 31 rows. When you get to 31 rows, we'll come right back and we'll show you what to do next. Okay, so here we are at the end of our project. We should have 31 rows of 15 single crochets all the way across your project. And this is what it should look like at this point. Okay, and now what I want you to do is turn your project this way and I want you to fold your project in half along the short edges here, okay? And what you should see is that the beginning 
of your project where you started here with this really long tail should line up with the end of your project here where you're gonna bind off. So let's kind of pull this out and I want you to leave another tail but this time I want it to be at least double the length of the tail you left in the beginning, um, double or more, so about 24 inches. I don't usually measure, I usually just sort of eyeball it, so I'm just gonna pull a bunch out here. And then I am going to go ahead and use my embroidery scissors to cut this. And I'm gonna pull out the remainder of my skein here. All right, there we are. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is we are going to thread the tails here. And you're gonna wanna use a tapestry needle that has a very large eye because all of the little pieces of yarn that are kind of coming off of this kind of get in the way. And so I like to kind of roll it in my hand slightly my, between my thumb and my middle forefinger here. And let's see if I can get this in. And I thread it. There we go. Okay. And then I'm going to do what's called the whip stitch. And that means I'm going to use a sewing technique to seal these edges together here. And it's gonna take me down and I'm gonna seal these edges together here. And that's what I'm gonna do with the, the one that's the longest, the 24 inch one. When I'm done doing that, I'm going to take the one from the beginning, the tail from the beginning that's about 12 inches, and I'm gonna whip stitch this last edge together here, okay? So let me just kind of briefly show you how to do the whip stitch. It's very, very easy. I do have a full video tutorial on how to do it that I can put in a link. But basically what you wanna do is you wanna kind of go through a stitch on one side of your project and through the corresponding stitch, the opposite stitch on the other side of your project. So you wanna really wanna make sure that your edges are lined up and you just pull it through and then you're gonna come back, you're gonna make a whip back through the next stitch and you wanna go through the stitches on one side, through the stitches on the other side and pull through again, okay? And you're gonna whip back through the stitches on this side and then through the stitches on the other side Okay, and you're just gonna keep doing that all the way down and then also all the way down on this side as well. So now I'm not actually down at the end, but I am gonna show you that even though you don't have nice little V stitches like you do on this side for this edge, this is kind of the raw edge, you can still do this whip, whip stitch technique. So let me show you, just kind of go in, make sure that you are catching somewhere on one side and go through directly on the opposite side and make sure that you're catching on that side too and pull through and then whip stitch back, catch somewhere on this side here and then catch somewhere on the opposite side of the other one and pull through, okay? So now I don't wanna do too much because I'm gonna actually have to take this out because that was just to show you, but I want you to go ahead and do that technique. Like I said, use the very long one to go down one way, down the other and use the shorter one to do the last raw edge that you have there and you will then weave in your ends and snip off the remainder and you will have a big and thick dish scrubby.